people often think, oh, it must be the most amazing orgasm ever, or that if a person squirts, that automatically means that they have come. It doesn't. Squirting is literally physical expulsion of liquid. There's only one study ever that's tried to figure that out. And it had a pretty small number of women in the study. The researchers try to get them to squirt over the course of three or four sessions, if I remember correctly. And something like 30% of those women managed to get squirted during those four sessions. That's highly inconsistent with the percentages that I hear from people who are pro squirt facilitators, if you want to call them that. Their success rate when people come, when women come and say, make me squirt, is over 90%. And maybe even higher, over 95%. Of course, the, that's anecdotal evidence, but it is possible that the vast majority of women have the body parts that allow for that to happen. Squirting can be an orgasm. It doesn't have to be an orgasm. And there are plenty of people who have squirted without coming, without it feeling pleasurable. Even sometimes it can feel unpleasant because the, the physical stimulation that's often required to get someone to squirt is quite vigorous. It's not like gentle caressing. You kind of have to get in there. The level of arousal is really important for whether it's gonna be experienced as pleasurable or not pleasurable. Sometimes the squirt is has a lot of urine in it. So we, you can test for some of those things like creatinine and urea, uric acid. In some of the samples of this fountain squirt, you see those at pretty high levels. In some of them, you see them at very low levels, like trace amounts. It's passing through the bladder and the bladder always has a little bit of urine left in even after you've peed. That's one of the reasons that we're pretty confident that that gushing fountain squirt has to pass through the bladder. But it's not yet clear why or how sometimes it contains high amounts of urine and urine specific compounds. And in some cases it does not. It's a very visual, very tangible sign of some accomplishment, of some goal being reached in sex. And for people who are very kind of goal oriented in their sex, I think there is a quite of a, you know, a little boost of their ego. If you've tried and you haven't been able to do it, like it's really not a big deal. That doesn't mean you're broken. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It's, we're all built differently. One is that gushing squirt that comes out in large quantities. Now, the other, this is actually so complicated. <laughs> There's a reason why this is so mystified, this topic. What you'll often hear from people who are teaching about squirting and talking about squirting is that the liquid that comes out comes from the skin's glands, from what they call the female prostate. And that's both true and not true. <laughs> the true part is that there is a white milky substance that can be secreted from these skin's glands, from the equivalent, the homologous tissue that exists in female bodies and male bodies. And they do produce this white milky substance that's similar in com composition, in chemical composition to the male prostate fluid, which makes up in men, it makes up about 30% of the seminal fluid. Female bodies also make that similar thing. However, that is not the glasses full of liquid 
that amount of liquid that comes out during the gushing squirt that that we most of the people are thinking about. That is very small in quantity. We're talking about a teaspoon, if anything, worth of liquid that the skin's gland produced. <laughs> 